Welcome to Bible class. Okay, all you social people. I like it. We are, if you need a Bible, by the way, there are a few in the bottom shelf in that uh, closet back there. We are, we are now going to be in the Acts of the Apostles for a little while. Starting with chapter 1. So, uh, here's, here's I, would, I would like to read it. Okay, I, I always am doing Bible studies. So, do I, is there a, is there a table that would like to volunteer to take Acts chapter 1, say, maybe we split this into two parts, or how about we do this? Um, this table over here, Acts 1, 1 to 5. I'm, you who have microphones, you, 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 who, you who have the gumption to have microphone at your table, um, or, so you get Acts 1 through 5, I'll give you 30 seconds to decide how you're going to divide that up. You in the middle, here, take Acts 6, or Acts 1, 6 to 11, okay? And then you all over here get the remainder of the chapter. Okay? So you can pass the mics around, do it verse by verse, delegate it to one person, right? We'll be democratic. Okay? Within, right? Uh, you're being, you know, you're, well, you're actually you're being so, so, you're in order, but uh, I give you general orders and you figure it out how you carry it out. Okay. All right? Yeah. So Acts chapter one. There are again, if you if you don't have, if, make sure every there should be plenty of study guides. There's some room at the table here if you need a Bible. It's back there in the closet. Um, there's some room at the table over there. Brian Schneider's got room over there. He doesn't have cooties. You can sit by him. Right? Thank you. All right. Okay. Acts one, one through five, please. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after he suffered by many crews, appearing to them during 40, 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You hear me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Okay, now 6 through 11, middle table. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of God? returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which was near Jerusalem, the Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of uh, Alphaeus, 
and Simon and the Zealot and Judas, the son of James. <clears throat> All of these, with one accord, were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was a was in all about 120, and said, <clears throat> Brothers, the scripture has been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit before, spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in his ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, uh, Alchemy, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May this camp be desolate, and let there be no one dwell in it. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all of this time that the Lord Jesus went in and among us, beginning with baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these men must become with us a witness to him, resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph called Barabbas and also called Justice and Mathis. And they prayed and said, you Lord, who, <clears throat> who know the hearts of all? Show us which one of these two have you chosen? And to take the place in his ministry and the apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots, and for them the lots fell to Mathis, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Okay. So if you're a table with the microphone, pass it to the table behind you. So the table behind you, so you can be ready. All right. Uh, let's pray. Lord, as we take our journey uh, into the beginning of, book of the book of Acts here, we pray, as you will remind us later, uh, through St. John, that through this word, you lead us into all truth, and then remind us of what we have been taught. So again, enlighten us by your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Uh, if, uh, on the top, so what I'm using here, we've used these before. These are Life by His Word Bible Studies. There's a whole series of Bible studies so, that were published uh, with the publication of the New Lutheran Study Bible. So this is designed, these are designed to work. And that's, at least at this point, primarily what I'm, what I'm going to use. Eventually, when we get into the missionary journeys, I've done some teaching in the past on that. And I think it's way more fun to look at maps and other stuff when we get to the, when we get to the missionary journeys eventually. Okay. Let's look, according to your study, at verse 18 of chapter 1. Now this man, Judas, acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness. I love the Bible. The Bible, you know, this, yeah, if you're if you're on the outside, you know. Everything about Christianity is just nice and sweet and quaint. Um, and, you know, but if you actually open the scriptures, you get you get some uh, more interesting things. Like the man who betrayed Judas acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his balls gushed up. Yes. <laughs> oh, boys go cool. Right. All right. Um, Judas bought the field indirectly. It notes he threw 30 pieces of silver. Does somebody want to take that Matthew passage? Somebody gave me to do that Matthew 27, 5 to 8. Going once. There you go, Wilson. You got it, bud. Can you find Matthew 20, Matthew 27, 5 through 8? Make sure you use the microphone. Matthew 27, 5 to 8. Whenever you got it, fire away. Thank you. 
and throwing down the pieces of silver into the temple, he departed, and then he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is blood money. So they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field as a burial place for strangers. Therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. There you go. Okay. These are pretty upright guys. You know, they'll, uh, they'll sell Jesus for money, but they won't use it when it gets thrown back at them for temple stuff. I mean, facetious. Um, <laughs> what's that? For temple stuff. For temple stuff. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, they might have bought a donkey with it, but they weren't going to throw it in the temple, right? Okay. Um, going back to the going back to the beginning of the of the chapter. Question number one: What did the disciples do between Jesus' resurrection and the day of Pentecost? Okay. I'll give you two minutes at your tables. Look through, look through your text. Okay, what did the disciples do between Jesus' resurrection and the day of Pentecost? Go. Now again, in your answer, use the text. Resurrection. Oh, I am on the wrong side. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? I have that open. My bad. We'll answer that question, then we'll go back. Once I started there. Okay, so they went back to the <laughs> <laughs> I was actually, the, I'm on the back side of the study. I would just get it over and I looked at it earlier. That's all right, well, it doesn't matter. We'll do that. We'll do that. So what did they do between the day of resurrection and Pentecost? Okay, they hid. They were in the upper room. And they played pinnacle in the upper room. What, 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 I mean, what's, what does it say they were doing? Praying. They were praying. Okay. Well, God had also made. You know, he had also. Christ had also made them some promises. So they're they're praying and they're and they're wait and. Well, I'm giving you. They're waiting. With her, for the for the sending of the Spirit, right? They're wait. They're waiting with hope. Okay. All right. Now let's go back to the actual beginning of the chapter. Um, so I can be thank you. <coughs> Figures, my wife knew I was boss. Okay. Right. That won't be the last time that that happens. <laughs> not the only one. Yeah, you're not the only one that, that, that needs a wife to back for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, help her fit for him. Right. Okay. All right. Oh, good gravy. I don't know how to do that. All right. Acts chapter 1. So here's what I get. Yeah, here is where I want to back table. Uh, if I can sign somebody back there, uh, Colossians 4:14. Uh, back table in the middle here, Second Timothy 4:11, and then back over here, somebody take Philemon, 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 um, Philemon 24. Okay. And let's, if possible, let's read those first. And then kind of, and then read the note. So somebody back here, do you have uh, Colossians 4, verse 14? Yep, you got it, go for it. So again, this is Colossians 4, verse 14. And it was the kind of you to share my trouble. 
That's, that should that got the wrong one there. Yeah, Colossians 4.14. Or should be Colossians. Share my trouble, but is that Thessalonians? Yes. Oh. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Colossians 4.14. There you go. Our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings. Okay, so the mention of Luke, okay? Colossians 4.14. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 11. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he okay. is very youthful to me for, my, for ministry. Excellent. Okay. Um, that the reference to Mark also will be important later when we get into Acts. Okay. So Luke, Luke alone is with, or bring Luke with. Re repeat the verse here. <laughs> Second Timothy 4:11. Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is very youthful to me for ministry. Paul, so Paul's in prison. Luke alone is with me. Okay. Now Philemon, uh, verse 24. Who's got that? So do Mark, Aristarchus, Damas, and Luke, my fellow workers. Okay. So references to Luke. Because if you look in the first verse of Acts, it says... In my first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus. What does anybody have? It? Began, Luke to one? To began to do and teach. Okay. Um, I won't get into all the details here. Uh, Theophilus means friend of God. You know, you can spend whole books and philosophy. You know, and theologians do doctoral dissertations. On this, it's one of the ways you can get one of those things. Debating uh, whether this is an actual person or a general or a general reference. Uh, I lean I lean towards the general reference in the first book of Theophilus. I dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. Now, what does that tell us? What? Yeah. He continues to do and. That he continues to do and teach. Who's the he? Jesus. Jesus. This is a big deal. We, tend, we, you know, we, we title this book the Acts of the Apostles. We tend to think of it as the Acts of the Church, but it is actually, according to, even to the first verse of the book, this, these are the continuing acts of Jesus through uh, his church, as it were. Okay. So in the, the first book, by the way, is Luke. The gospel is the gospel of Luke. Alright, in my first book, I I recorded or I dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. Alright, would somebody read verse six for us? Kind of just looking ahead. Somebody have verse six? Who would do that? Go for it, Dave. Restore the kingdom to Israel. So when they had come together, yeah, in Acts chapter, yeah, the whole verse. Acts chapter one, well, I'll read it. Just, you've got it. Do it. Verse six. So when they, no. Luke is the author of the book. Theophilus is, is, is a friend of God. So he's writing it to them, right? Thank you for clarifying. Yep. Yeah. Good question. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Okay. So many, as noted in your, as, as noted there under the book, under verse 6, many Jews hoped that the Messiah would bring back the glory days of David and Solomon to the physical nation of Israel. God's kingdom would come, as we'll see, but not as expected. Jesus said this, you read the Gospels, you see it again and again and again. Right? The, the kingdom is going to be far more, and far is far more, and is far greater than the original than the original kingdom. Okay? Okay, now have some fun at your tables with question number one. Um, we'll have a bit of a competition here. All right. By the way, the accounts the accounts of the resurrection, Matthew twenty eight, 
Mark 16, Luke 24, John chapter 20 and 21. It's, I, in, we're going to spend a little time here, but it's good, re, good remembering them. So make a list. Um, list as many appearances of the risen Christ as you can, as you can do in a quick stand, scan. I'm going to give you three minutes. <coughs> On your market set, go. <laughs> Was it the same? I just said Kingdom of God 
And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. And again, John baptized with water. So, what, so what'd you come up with? Yes? I'll name one. Mary saw him. Mary saw him. What else? Two disciples on the road to Damascus. Uh, Dima uh, Emmaus. To Emmaus, yeah. Yeah, the road to Damascus thing is going to come up in a couple of chapters here. Yeah. Twice in the upper room. Twice in the upper room. What else? Fishing. Fishing. Ascension day. Ascension day. Yeah. I guess he was. Before, yeah, that's the ascension. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Justice, Mormon All right. Well, that's well. Yeah, kind of. Well, we'll get we'll get there in just we'll get there in just a minute. That's yeah. That's in John, right? That's a, that was a, a fishing morning. One of the fishing mornings, if I remember rightly. Right. James. James. You also right because gathered. It, it's worth it, it's worth noting. We'll come to that. Um, but he's gathered. And in fact, we'll, well, we're going to come. We're going to come to that in a little bit because that's where's the where's the reference to Mary and his brothers? That's a little bit. That's a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit later in the middle of the chapter. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, yeah, where they were all together. That's in the next section. Yeah. All right, let's go. Let's go to chat. Let's go to question two. Somebody take John chapter fourteen twenty six. John fourteen twenty six, which I regard as an extremely important verse. <laughs> because Jesus had said, "Stay." You know, he appeared to them of a course forty days. We have the summary in my former book. Uh, Luke writes. Theophilus, friend of God, about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles and presenting himself alive over with many proofs over 40 days, speaking of the kingdom of God, while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. What is John 14? So John 14 is Jesus in the upper room on the night of his betrayal. There's several teachings related to the Holy Spirit here. This is one of them. Who's got it? Go for it. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So teach you all things and remind you of everything. So the, the the purpose of the Spirit, we often talk about this, or we try to talk about this as frequently as we, as we can, but the work, the, the work of the Spirit is, is to bring us Christ and to keep us in Christ. Okay? All right, that's, so. Also called the Comforter, sometimes the Counselor, right? Uh, in the Greek there, the Paraclete, right? The coming of the Holy Spirit, question two, was such a special blessing that Jesus did not want his disciples to miss out on it. I think that's an understatement. Um, what gifts would the Holy Spirit give to them? What What are the gifts that the Holy Spirit would give, according to the text that we just looked at? An understanding of the things Jesus had told them before. Yep. And what they... Their eyes would be open to what he already told them to expect that they just missed. The, that the, the 14 passage is, well, the, all the passages in the upper room regarding the work of the Holy Spirit are important, and we see the fulfillment of these when we get to chapter 2 in the day of Pentecost. Um, because there, there you see, that I think in particular, in the preaching of Peter and Pentecost, you, you see this this promise fulfilled. He will lead you all to, into all things and remind you of all that he taught. How many times did Jesus say, including in the passage I think we looked at recently, 
uh, or last last week that I'm going to die. On the third day, I'll arrive. I will rise, but they don't get it. Um, but now, on the day of Pentecost, they get it. They're proclaiming. They're, pro they're proclaiming it. They've seen it. They touched it. Right? They, so, all right. What? A, so, the gifts are. I mean, there are a pile of them, but essentially, from 1426, we get again. Paul, how did you phrase it? Um, he pointed, he pointed out the things that he had already told them so that they would finally understand when they think back, oh yeah, he told us this, and this is what happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, oh yeah, it's also an understatement, but yes, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. Um, kind of like parents and children some days, I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's, an, it's, an in, it's an interesting... That's a very interesting analogy, because so a lot of us are parents. Because this this is this is true with us, generally speaking. Uh, very, 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 very few of us are wise as children. <laughs> uh, yes. Don't have enough there. Uh, so he drives us to scripture, to the word. Yep. And that's how he teaches. Through the word, indeed. All right, look at verse 8. Who's got verse 8 for us? Next question. <coughs> Acts 1, verse 8. Then we go to Jerusalem and wait until the gift comes. And then what? Well, somebody read verse 8. <laughs> yeah. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come unto you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. You receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We'll look at this as we go on. There are kind of concentric circles there of going out. So, question number three. What's what's the mission plan of Jesus? According to verse eight. Question. Yes. So it says in Samaria and to the end of the earth. Is that a location or an event? Uh, G, yeah. The end of the earth is a way of saying. What is the end of the earth is a way of saying? Everywhere. Everywhere. So Jerusalem. So you have you you kind of have it. If you, I think there's. I think there's one of these in uh, maybe a little bit further on in the Lutheran Study Bible. I didn't look ahead of time. Um, there consent, there's a map with concentric circles. So Jerusalem, the region of Judea, Samaria kind of surrounding, and then to the ends of the earth. So basically I have a picture here of, of, the, of concentric, as it were, concentric circles. So it's uh, location, not any well, yeah, it's a location. I mean, but it's yeah, it's every it's a it's a location, but it's not a particular location. It's and they had no concept of a round world at that time. There were ends. Well, and that's and we still to the end to the ends of the earth. I mean, there is there is some concept of round, and for example, in Isaiah, but um, they typically didn't think that way. Hold on. Yeah. Because it's, it, I see why she's asking the question. Because it doesn't say to the ends of the earth, it says to the end of the earth. Yeah. Yours says ends. So what's your translation? Let me look at my Greek. I think you're. I think Pat, you are right that it's a relatively minor thing. Well, it's 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 not. It's you can you can see what's going on here. Jesus is saying this goes out. Everywhere, yes. and that's clearly that's well, clearly the point. Yes, yes. I think so. So the earth is flat and moves out from there. Well, and it also includes so it, it includes it includes. Re remember that remember that after King David, the kingdom is split, north and south, and the northern kingdom ends up in all kinds of pagan idolatry. They have the trouble in the south too, but. In the south, in Judah, they have Jerusalem and the temple, and it kept things centered, as it were. But in the north, they, I mean, read Kings or Chronicles, and you see this 
back and forth, you know, so and so did well in the eyes of the Lord, Lord, the other guy was a dolt. Um, you know, the next, so you can see this kind of projecting out, and that's, this is what, as we read through Acts, it, it, we are going to see the Lord open further the eyes of his own apostles and the church to the mission that he talked about all the way along. Yes? One of the other ideas that comes along with that, too, it's not just the leadership, but the relationship that you have at that time. So it starts off when you put your friends, people you know, the ones that kind of know you with, those that are strangers to you, those who are enemies to you. Yep. And so it has a different kind of thing. It's starting to all seek the good guys. You tell it to everybody. Well, and, that, and, that's, and that's a good point, and you'll, we'll see this come out. So not only those of close affinity, but, all, but, also, but also those so but also those who were, who totally warped the message. It warped God's word. Remember, the, the Samaritans uh, don't accept the prophets, and they they truncate the first five the first five books. Um, you know, kind of like Thomas Jefferson didn't like the miracles, and so he cut off the Bible. You guys knew that, right? Our, our great Thomas Jefferson, who's a brilliant man, chopped up the Bible and got rid of the miracles because, of course, it wasn't possible. Um, there's a Jefferson Bible. Um, the, the Samaritans did that. Um, and, and yet, Jesus spent some time doing ministry to Samaritans, didn't he? A woman at the well, right? Uh, the, the man who was, you know, the parable man. So, Part of, part of, as Carol's point, part of the message is to those whom you previously considered enemies, and then also to people who are utter foreigners. And as we go forward in Acts, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see the apostles and the church coming to terms with this truth that was there all along. It's not just a new thing with Jesus. Um, and Jesus draws it. It's, it's in Isaiah. It's in Jeremiah. Um, it's in Genesis that the, that the mission of the reconciliation work, reconciling work of Christ, is is for all people. And think of think of the promise to God of God to Abraham, Genesis 12. Another. Let me finish my thought, and I'll come back. And I'll come back. To this. Okay. Um, Think of the promise to God of God to Abraham, right? I will bless you and make your you know make your name great, and through your seed, through through one singular descendant of yours, Abram, I will bless all the peoples of the world. If that's not a messianic promise, also for the Gentiles, I don't know what is. Yes. Well, this is this is from the study Bible here. Yep. Without any doubt, God also knows and has determined for everyone the time and the hour of his call and conversion. But this time has not been revealed to us. Therefore, we have a command always to keep proclaiming the word and trust in the time and hour of conversion to God. So that gives, that gives the end of the earth as a time also. Yeah, I mean you have other you have other passages. Right? God is God is, God is I, I want to. We're going to see we're going to see this work out. There's no way we're going to barely finish the first study today. Okay. Um, and by the way, I don't. I I am not intending. I'm not intending to rush through this. I mean, I had I had in my mind that we would do a, a chapter a week. Um, that's probably not. Good. Okay. That's that's a. Let's do question number four with the with the objective at at least to getting worse through through verse eleven today. All right? Um, why was it so important for Jesus to ascend into heaven? Think about what it says there. Because then the Holy Spirit will come. That's absolutely. So if you look at so beginning at verse nine, or so let's finish with with eight. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all, all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And when he, when he, Jesus, had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, 
and a cloud took him out of their sight. Verse 10, And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. Why, based on that in the previous passages, why is, why is it important? What, why is the ascension of Jesus important? Right? Yes? Because you can't come back unless you leave. Because <laughs> you can't come back unless you, unless you leave. <laughs> you can't come back unless you leave. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna offer a gentle yeah. correction to that. Okay. Um, because you're you're wrong and you're right. Okay. okay? Um, think about right this because the book begins with chapter verse one, Acts one, is all that Jesus began to do and teach. So even though Jesus has ascended into heaven, um, he hasn't handed the baton and say, now you, he is going to continue to work through them, but he, well, he's continuing to work, but it's going to be, this is your point, right. through them. Yeah. yeah. I guess more of like a, a trusting in the, the dynamics, the change in dynamics. There, there, is a, there, there is a mystery here, we're, and we're going to dive into that. There's a, there's a mystery here, but God is going, God is at work. The whole, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is going to continue this mission. Yes. So, if you think about it, or what I was thinking about is, you go back to Genesis where it goes, let us create all things. Yes. So, as we've been taught, Jesus is there. Indeed. So, that then God sends his son down to us at his birth. Yes. And when he's fulfilled what he was supposed to do, and dying on the cross, that's... Going, I'm going back home, but I'm going to come back. Right. And even though he's not, and this is the thing, he's not absent. Yeah. And this is where, you know, we talked about this when we, we did our study of the Augsburg, Augsburg Confession earlier this year. If you're, if you're a Calvinist, Jesus ascends into heaven and he's located there. We also, we Lutherans, and historically in the church, contend based on the, you know, from the scriptures, because Christ also says he's present, that Jesus is, the, the big theological word is ubiquitous. He is, he, or he is also everywhere present. He's present exactly where he, where he says he will be. So when, you know, as Jesus ascends to the right hand of the throne of God, to, to the, the place of his authority, the place where he will rule, um, he's not also he, he's also still present because he's God, this is part of the mystery of the faith um, and we want to you know, necessarily sometimes we'll try and <clears throat> let me put it differently a key part if you're going to submit to the scriptures is to embrace or receive the mystery of faith and the, the mystery of God's presence and how he works Right. Can I see another hand? Yes. I think correct me if I'm wrong. Please. Christ, um, Christ's death, death and resurrection was twofold. Uh, because what it did is also it cleansed heaven. In other words, like all of the, um, the devil was cast down along with all of his angels at that time because. God's promise was fulfilled. Sure. Christ, when Christ died and then rose up to heaven, heaven was made <coughs> was cleansed at that time as well. That's what I, you know, with some of the theologians, that's what I, I don't, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, heaven? Oh, yes, he was. Yeah. He was on a council up there. 
the council. Yeah, this we're getting into different <coughs> council theories. So um, <laughs> let me because yeah, there, there's some history here. Um, let let me let me ponder and think about that before I give an amen to your statement. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go to questions. Yeah. So we're going to leave that one there on the table for now. Okay. Yeah. Right. Let's go to question. Let's go to question number five. Explain how the words of the angels, where again this is where it says, and two men, right? Explain explain how the works how the work. The words of the angels were both a gentle rebuke, rebuke and a profound comfort. So we're, again, we're looking at page, uh, or excuse me, verse 10 and 11. While they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? So, and so forth. So why are, why are those words of the angels both a gentle rebuke and a profound comfort. What do you think? Yes. All right, but I, I want. Are you going to answer my question? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right I, don't to, I don't want to go on a soapbox. So we got five minutes left. Yeah. Even though Jesus had said this again and again, and here it is in the ascension to the, you know, to the Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth, uh, they're going to have to be forced out. Uh, the, the Spirit is going to compel them to go. Yes. The rebuke was, well, get to it. The rebuke was, well, get to it. Right? So where's the cause? Coming back, and the comfort is he's coming back. Okay, that, that's not a bad stolen workism. There. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Get to it, uh, and I'm and I'm coming back. That is, and that is a great comfort. Um, when everything hits the fan in your life or the world. Um, we we know that Christ is raised from the dead, and that He's kept His every promise, and He promises that He will return and take us and take us to Himself, and that's a big deal. Question six: The disciples wanted information about Jesus' second coming. Jesus said they should focus only on what God wanted them to do now. How can we apply this to ourselves? Right. This is, verse, this is verse 6 and 7. When are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? This is going back to the earlier verse, right? And he says, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons, but, and so forth. So, um, how can we apply this to ourselves? It's a good question. Yes, you had your first hand. Reminds me of high school, play football, don't look at the clock, just play harder. <laughs> <laughs> don't give up in the last minute or two. Right. Yeah. Finish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder that things happen in his time. Yeah. Not our time. And just keep doing what we're doing when he's what he's called us to do. It's a good reminder, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He already restored the kingdom. He has already restored the kingdom. Flesh that out. Because he is, he brings the kingdom. He is the kingdom. He brings it with him. Yes. Yeah. And so why is that? And why is that to answer the question? So how? Well, so how are you applying that to yourself? I'm not. Yeah, he's talking right now. Yeah. Hold on. I'll get you. Like Michael said, do it. Okay. Yes. Now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right, and we can't, we can't not, because I don't, I don't want to make this, I don't want, I don't want to make the, the spreading of the mission's law. Um, Christ is raised from the dead. 
we have we have the forgiveness of, we have the forgiveness of sins. We um, God God gives us peace and hope. I mean, how can we not? Yeah. yeah. We're not all going to quit our jobs or whatever we right. do and go out and spread the mission. It's, it's up to us to do that in our daily lives, wherever and whatever that is. And in indeed, and that's something we'll also we'll also talk about is you know your. Um, and we, we, yesterday we had the, the Act Like Men event here, so for men and boys, and we talked we talked about the godly importance of work. You know that we are cre- we remember this this was part of the creation before the fall into sin. We're we're given to work, um, and that that work is restored in Christ, even though we're we're in difficulty. So God calls us to remember to work. Colossians work as unto the Lord, as serving the Lord, not as people pleasers and lip service, but even, and we asked the boys, uh, we asked some of the men in front of the boys, have you ever had a job that you didn't like? Most of the guys in the room <laughs> raised, raised their hand. Um, and and doesn't, but to the Lord, I mean, does it matter? You still were called to show up and to work faithfully. I think you got a hand? Yeah, it just hit me, because you will be my witnesses but it doesn't say that we're definitely always going to be good witnesses. <laughs> yeah. Right. Indeed. Yeah. All right. So we will we will pick up with part two of Acts chapter one uh, next week. All right. Let's pray. Lord, you've called us to bear witness to your grace and mercy in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. We who are here are recipients of that message, what would certainly have been near about the ends of the earth to the apostles. Here we are. And yet we know how much farther it can go. Thank you for our participation locally, our opportunities. Thank you for our regional opportunities here. Thank you for the international partnerships that we have as we bear witness to your good news that you died for the sins of the world and rose from the dead. Help us today in our homes to be faithful witnesses to our family of your forgiveness and grace. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.